In this video, I want to explore a deceptively simple question. What happens when you squeeze light? And more intriguingly, what does quantum mechanics and Heisenberg's uncertainty principle have to say about it? To begin with, consider a laser beam. If you then fire the beam at a screen, you'll see a familiar circular patch of light. Next, consider introducing two barriers forming a gap or a narrow slit. What happens if we pass the laser beam through this gap? You might think that as long as the gap is wide enough, the beam will just pass through unchanged. But what happens if you make the gap narrower so that it blocks out part of the beam itself? If you think about it, as the gap gets narrower, it will cut off more and more of the light, eating into the sides of the beam. So what might you expect to observe on the screen itself? Well, you would probably expect that as the gap gets narrower, you simply see a thinner and thinner slice of the beam on the screen. And if you continue doing this, eventually, the light is completely blocked out. But is this what actually happens? Well, the answer is no. In fact, something truly remarkable and quite baffling happens. You see, when you pass the laser light through a small gap, you observe a beautifully distinctive pattern of light and dark bands of light, known as a diffraction pattern. And the diffraction pattern consists of a central bright fringe, the most intense region, flanked by dimmer subsidiary fringes interspersed with dark fringes where no light appears. And if you scan across the pattern and measure the intensity of the light, you find a distinctive pattern. For those interested, I've made a video looking at how this pattern is formed, and we'll put a link in the description. But for our purposes today, we're going to focus on the fact that as we make the gap narrower, we observe something truly remarkable. Rather than the pattern of light on the screen shrinking, we actually see it spread out further and further. And the crazy thing is that the narrower we make the slit, the wider the pattern and central fringe becomes. It's almost as if squeezing the light makes it want to spread out even more. So how can we understand this strange spreading out behaviour? To answer that question, we need to zoom in to the quantum scale. The first thing to appreciate is that a laser beam is in fact a collection of photons or particles of light. And when we shine a laser beam through a gap, we are in fact sending trillions and trillions of photons through the gap towards the screen. Now imagine we turn the laser intensity right down, firing just one photon at a time through the gap and recording where each photon ends up landing on the screen. And imagine that we represent each location with a dot. If we do this, we see that a pattern begins to slowly emerge and that this pattern matches the light and dark fringes that we observe with a full intensity beam. And if we now imagine counting how many photons are detected within certain intervals across the screen and we record this data as a histogram, then we see that the histogram distribution of counts matches the intensity pattern of the light. Now, according to quantum mechanics, we cannot predict where any individual photon will land on the screen. But after firing enough of them through the slit, a pattern begins to emerge. And this pattern exactly matches the diffraction pattern we observed with the full intensity laser beam. So if you think about it, the diffraction pattern actually represents a probability distribution. It tells us where individual photons are most likely to land. Regions where the intensity is greatest represent regions where we are most likely to detect our individual photon, and less intense regions where we are less likely to detect a photon. So let's now return to the question of squeezing light through a small gap. When we make the gap narrower, the pattern on the screen spreads out, and this is what we want to understand. So how can we do that? Well, we know that light is comprised of photons, and if we imagine that the photons emerging from the laser source all have the same wavelength, lambda, 
and are all moving in the same direction, which we will call the x direction, then we can calculate the momentum along the x direction using the well known de Broglie relation p equals h over lambda, where h is Planck's constant and lambda is the wavelength of the laser light. Now, given that all the photons are initially assumed to be moving along the x direction, we can say that their y component of momentum prior to passing through the slit is zero. OK, so let's now imagine passing these photons through a gap of size A and then detecting where they land on a screen that is located on the other side of the gap. Now, you would be justified in thinking that if a photon only has momentum in the x direction and it passes through the gap, that it will continue in a straight line and end up being detected on the screen in line with the gap. However, by observing the actual diffraction pattern, we know that this is not the case, because we know that photons end up on the screen in a variety of locations either side of the centre. So how can we understand this? Well, if we consider a photon that is detected at the very edge of the central fringe at an angle theta, then this photon must have a component of momentum in the y direction, p subscript y, as well as the component in the x direction that we've already accounted for. Now, if we look at the geometry of this situation, then we see that the x and y components of momentum, along with the resultant momentum, form a right angled triangle, and therefore we can relate the x and y components using trigonometry by recalling that tan of theta is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent side of our triangle, and that is simply equal to p subscript y divided by p subscript x. Now, given that the angle theta is in general very, very small, we can use the small angle approximation to write tan of theta is roughly equal to theta, provided that theta is measured in radians. And therefore, we can write that theta is roughly equal to p subscript y divided by p subscript x. Now, the next step is to realise that we can write down an equivalent expression for the angle theta by referring to the fact that for a single slit diffraction pattern, basic geometric optics tells us that provided the wavelength of the laser light is much smaller than the width of the gap, A, we can write the angle to the edge of the central fringe in terms of the wavelength lambda and the slit width A as theta equals lambda divided by A. And so we now have two expressions for the angle theta. And if we combine them, we find the following relation. And if we then rearrange this, we find that we can write p subscript y is roughly equal to p subscript x multiplied by lambda divided by a. OK, so what is this expression telling us? Well, if you think about it, this relation is saying that the photons that are detected within the central fringe of the diffraction pattern must have a range of y components of momentum from plus px times lambda over a to minus px times lambda over a. And given that we cannot say with certainty where an individual photon will be detected, it follows that there is an inherent uncertainty in the photon's y component of momentum. And furthermore, we can quantify this uncertainty using the range that we've just established by saying that the uncertainty in the y component of momentum must be greater than or equal to p subscript x times lambda over a. This then gives us a lower bound on the uncertainty in the y momentum. We're not saying that every photon has this value, but the fact that some of them do means that the distribution must be wide enough to include it, and that's enough to give us a physically meaningful estimate of the uncertainty. And crucially, this relationship shows that the narrower the gap, the smaller a becomes, the larger the uncertainty in the y component of momentum. In other words, squeezing the photons through a smaller gap causes a greater spread in y component momentum values, which in turn means a wider spread of possible positions on the screen. And so we're now in a position to pull together the different threads. Firstly, Let's think about the gap through which the photons pass. If you think about it, we cannot say for sure where in the gap the photon passes through, 
only that it does. And therefore, there is an inherent uncertainty in our knowledge of where the particle passes through the gap. So if we return to our setup, we see that the gap is aligned along the y-axis and has a width equal to a. And therefore, we can say that there is an uncertainty in the y-position of the photon when passing through the gap that is roughly equal to the size of the gap, a. And then, if we recall the expression we derived earlier for the uncertainty in the y component of momentum, and combine this with the uncertainty in position, then we find the following relation. And if we rearrange this, we find that delta y times delta p subscript y is greater than or equal to p subscript x times lambda. And then the final step is to remember that the x component of momentum is simply equal to h over lambda. And so if we sub this into our uncertainty equation, we find the following expression. And then if we cancel out the lambda terms, we finally arrive at the following beautiful expression. Delta y times delta p is greater than or equal to h. And you might recognise this as a statement of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. This is telling us that there is an inherent limit to how precisely we can simultaneously know our photon's momentum and position. And so we're now able to answer the question we posed at the beginning. What happens when you squeeze light? Well, the answer is, it spreads out. And the reason lies in the principles of quantum mechanics. By narrowing the gap, we increase our knowledge of where the photon is, but that leads to a greater uncertainty in its momentum. And this uncertainty causes a wider range of possible outcomes for where the photon ends up on the screen. The diffraction pattern then reflects a fundamental quantum limit on how precisely we can know both a particle's position and its momentum at the same time. It's a clear and tangible demonstration of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in action. And that is where we will end for today. So thank you for watching and until next time, goodbye.